It was that dramatic change in power to weight output that allowed for the design of an aircraft to fill the air cavalry role. And the Americans turned to a helicopter designated the Bell UH-1, codenamed the Iroquois, but affectionately known as the Huey. The sight of Huey's landing with armed troops spilling from either side is one of the defining images of the Vietnam War. Designed from the outset to move men, its large cabin space was sufficient for 14 combat-ready troops who gained access through large, sliding, windowed doors on either side of the fuselage. With a base crew comprised of one to four personnel, depending on the task and equipment utilized, the Huey, powered by its turboshaft engine, could vertically lift a payload of 1,750 kilograms and then move it at a top speed of 220 kilometers per hour. And like the ground and water-based machines that evolved from simple troop carriers to offensive weapons, so too did the Huey. So gradually they became more and more armed as helicopter gunships. So with forward firing machine guns and rockets, and also with door guns that could be fired by troops on board in support of those on the ground. Hueys in Vietnam were called upon to fulfill a variety of roles that few aircraft of the time could match. But perhaps their greatest achievement was in medevac operations. With six medical litters filling the cargo space, Hueys were responsible for airlifting an estimated 90,000 injured troops through the course of the Vietnam War. While the Huey could move men quickly, Battle often calls for heavy weapons to support troops. And to move heavy equipment is the task of a heavy weight, like the Boeing CH-47 Chinook. The Chinook is a heavy lift helicopter. It was designed to be both a cargo carrying and troop carrying helicopter uh, that first saw widespread service in the, the Vietnam War. Despite being introduced in 1962, the Chinook is still one of the heaviest lifting helicopters in the world, and one of the fastest in the US military inventory. A durable twin-engine tandem rotor helicopter, the Chinook was originally designed as a troop transport and supply vehicle as such is capable of carrying as many as 55 combat troops or 24 medical litters. In fact, in Vietnam, the Chinook transported over 670,000 passengers in its first two years of service alone. But it quickly very much saw favor actually carrying equipment, uh, particularly things like artillery. Powered by twin turbo shaft engines, that have been constantly upgraded since its introduction, the Chinook can lift nearly 12 tons using two counter-rotating rotors that eliminate the power drain of the anti-torque tail rotor found on single-bladed helicopters. The helicopter generates lift, um, not by forward motion, but by the rotation of its main rotor. And so the Chinook was able to basically double the surface area of rotors by adding a second rotor disc and simultaneously achieving the torque balance so that it could cope with different distributions of mass in the vehicle. This makes the Chinook incredibly stable while hovering over a specific location. And so where the Chinook really excels is in the deployment of artillery, gun crews, and transport vehicles to inaccessible locations in support of frontline troops. Using a triple hook system, which provides in-fight stability, large external loads, such as 155 millimeter howitzers or armored vehicles, can be transported to the front line at speeds of up to 260 kilometers per hour. For half a century, the Chinook has been central to maintaining the maneuverability of troops and equipment so essential to modern warfare. And when it started life, it shared that job of moving men with the Huey, 
and it continues to offer that same support to the Huey's replacement, the Blackhawk. Helicopters like the Huey and the Chinook ushered in a radically different way of fighting war. But all new methods of attack are eventually countered by adaptations in defense. And with time, the Huey became increasingly vulnerable. While helicopters had the utility of being able to operate very close to the fight and in close support of that fight, of course, that made them targets, made them susceptible to things like shoulder-launched infrared missiles. Enter the Black Hawk, the most widely used military transport helicopter in the world today. The Black Hawk very much took over the role of a battlefield utility or battlefield transport from the Huey. The Black Hawk addresses the Huey's perceived shortcomings in every respect. The first being power. The Black Hawk is a larger, heavier, higher performance helicopter, and so it uses two engines to, to drive its main rotor. Twin engines increase survivability, and with a top speed of 294 kilometers per hour and superior ballistic protection, it is far less susceptible to small arms fire. The Black Hawk incorporates a number of other design features that add flexibility to that survivability. With the capacity to carry 11 troops with equipment, it can also lift 1,200 kilograms of cargo internally, or 4,100 kilograms externally by sling, which equates to a 105 millimeter howitzer, along with 30 rounds of ammunition and a four-man crew in a single lift. The Black Hawk has found um, application in, in, in a, a number of different roles. With an armament that can include anything from machine guns to Hellfire missiles, the Black Hawk is equally accomplished in both defense and offense. In addition, it is equipped with enhanced stealth capabilities. Any gas turbine will have a very hot exhaust plume, and that is a perfect target, both in terms of surveillance, but then also for shooting down that aircraft. And so the Black Hawk uses a, an infrared suppression system to try and hide and cool the hot exhaust of the engine before it, it is completely exhausted. While helicopters like the Black Hawk have changed the way we fight, they still suffer from relatively slow speed, short range, and limited lifting capabilities, leading aircraft designers to search for ways to combine the attributes of both helicopters and conventional airplanes.